Uh, I mean, this one is absolutely a Josh one. <clears throat> Number seven. <laughs> How should I pitch Dungeon World to D&D players? Pretty much the title, but I want to pitch Dungeon World to folks who only know D&D and want them to feel comfortable with trying something else without being too in uh, intimidated. It's like D&D, but cooler. Doubt. <laughs> 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 all right actual answer um yeah. well first of all intimidated i mean that problem is solved for you from the jump uh, because dungeon world isn't a much easier game to understand than 5e is so they're gonna be the opposite of intimidated they're probably gonna be pretty easily slide into that shit there's nothing to be intimidated about. If anything, you as the GM should be intimidated by Dungeon World rather than the players because the players can kind of just do what they were already doing. You as the GM have to shift how you run the game. But assuming you as the GM know what you're doing, how do you sales pitch it to players? I mean... I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it is a paired, a more pared down fantasy game heavily inspired by old school D&D which is to say like second edition basic uh, or Moldve if you know that phrase um, that and it or it is a game that emphasizes fictional positioning and the the following the fiction of the game more than the mechanical prior to prioritizing that 5e does which is to say 5e focuses more on the math and the numbers up front and then resolves the game that way dungeon world focuses more on the fiction sprinkles in the mechanics and then focuses on the fiction again a way i've heard people explain this is that D, &D resolutions go mechanics fiction back to mechanics Whereas Dungeon World Resolution goes fiction, mechanic, fiction, uh, back to fiction at the end. Uh, it is much more narrative focused play. So if you have players who get bored or annoyed by the fact that they want to do, you know, I would like to jump on the, the chandelier and then cut the rope and then swing down and hit all the enemies with the chandelier. And if your fighter player says that in D&D, &D, you as the GM have to go, okay, um, is that a bonus or an action? Do I make them make a skill check? Should it take multiple turns? How much damage does the chandelier do? Whereas in Dungeon World, you would very simply probably say, all right, give me a defy danger roll to see if you land safely on the chandelier and do the cutting part. And then as you swing down... You know, I'll roll, you know, maybe roll me like a D10 or a D12 of damage or whatever. You can kind of ballpark the damage and then maybe give me one other roll to see if you land safely. That would all get resolved very quickly because it would be fiction. Jump on chandelier, cut the rope mechanics, defy danger roll back to the fiction. You plow through all the enemies. You hurt them. You do whatever damage. They are now scattered across the room. You're on the other side of the room. What do you do now? And I think the main selling point is that Dungeon World feels more like a fantasy movie than D&D &D does because D&D &D is more of a tactical board game, whereas Dungeon World is focused more on the sort of narrative and fictional play of things uh, in a whole bunch of ways. Also, if you don't like using battle maps and love to do things theater of the mind, Dungeon World is a perfect game for you because you don't need grids or battle maps or anything because nothing in the game is measured in feet or inches or squares or any of that shit. Everything is done via fictional positioning with a couple of range tags to designate how far or close something is to you. It's also a really good game to introduce players to role playing if they've never done any RPG playing at all. I think Dungeon World is a very good uh, gateway drug, if you will. Because players who are new to the game can often just want to simply describe what they want to do. And sometimes when you're playing D&D 5e, you try to describe what you do, but the action economy or the game systems get in your way 
Whereas in Dungeon mm. World, you simply describe what you want to do fictionally, and then if there's a move related, you roll the move. If there's not a move related, you simply resolve the fiction as you would. I've had that with a lot of new players. I would run, uh, I ran a one shot for one of my friends, Ellie, and so many, I can't even count how many times where she was like, I want to try and do this. And I'm like, yes, as a DM, I just said it happens yeah. basically. Yes. So like there was no rules or there wasn't anything yes. like action economy wise. And I'm just like, uh, you know what? Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can figure it out later. Yes. Uh, how that works. Whereas Dungeon World is literally built around that concept. Hmm and Apocalypse World and many of the Powered by the Apocalypse games are all sort of built around that concept. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Play Dungeon. <laughs> I, I have very, I've, I've only played Dungeon World, so I have no actual comment in this, but I, I knew Josh would have something to say. That's why I wanted to add it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Josh has a lot to say on Dungeon World. I could go way deeper down this rabbit hole. I'm cutting myself off, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> I could go further. Fair enough. Because I, there's also a lot of philosophy and game design concepts built into the Powered by the Apocalypse games that I find very interesting. Mm. But I will not. Right. Turbo nerd type shit. <laughs> Fair enough. In, <laughs> hyper mega ultra turbo nerd type shit, I suppose is probably a better way to put it. Because <laughs> we're already doing turbo nerd shit. Number eight.